All right, here we go. Lunel, welcome back. Again. 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 You've been busy doing interviews for Vlad TV since last time. <laughs> yes, thank you. It's Sinbad. Yeah. You had John Amos a little earlier in the year. Yes. Uh, you got some more in the works also. We're not going to say who it is. Right. But there's some more Lunel Vlad TV interviews. Yes. In the works. Thank you. Yeah. The, uh, the Sinbad one was great. Yeah, Sinbad was full of stories, wasn't he? Oh, yeah. He's oh, got yeah. a million of them. Yeah, I'm sure there's a million more. Yeah. <laughs> that we haven't there covered are. yet. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, let's go ahead and get into it. First of all, rest in peace, Mama Wayans. Really? She just died. Really? At the age of 81. Wow. The matriarch of the, of the Wayans family. The empire. Yeah. Marlon Wayans, Damon Wayans. Yeah, that's terrible. Um, to lose your mother is terrible for anyone. And then also with them, with us saying goodbye to John Witherspoon, yeah, was a hard hit for the Wayans as well. Yeah. So I didn't know that. Mm. Did you know her at all? I didn't. Yeah, but of course the Wayans, you know, from I mean, even before uh, Living Color. I mean, they were doing like the the intros to like uh, Eddie Murphy's Delirious, and mm -hmm. and he was behind the scenes. And then the not only was In Living Color such an epic show, but then the Wayne's Brothers show, and then yeah, which you know, is running twenty times a day to this day. Really? Yes. Huh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have regular television anymore. Well, so. I do, <laughs> and it's on all the time. Yeah, yeah, quite a loss. But 81 years old, you know, she lived a good life. She got to see her kids sure. be extremely successful. Yeah. Uh, the name became symbolic yes. and legendary. Yes. Um, you know, I've interviewed Marlon Wayans before. Uh, cool dude. I know that he's going through it bet right now. Bet you don't get Keenan. I haven't gotten Keenan yet. <laughs> I bet you, uh, you he's not about that interview life too much. Yeah, he doesn't really do interviews, does he? Right. That's too bad. We need to get him. We would love to get him. Come on, Keenan. Maybe I'll get him. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Well, top of the news, Mike Tyson is going to be boxing Roy Jones Jr. They're not even the same weight class, though. Tyson's a heavyweight, and Roy Jones was like a middleweight. And a senior citizen. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. Well, I mean, isn't it for charity or something? Uh, I don't know about that. I think Mike needs to get paid. Really? <laughs> to do? I this. think he's got a pretty successful cannabis business. You know? Yeah. Mike spends money though. Mike has spent money. I think, I think well, he... the old Mike did. And we don't know exactly what the, the, what new the Mike? current Mike is doing. Yeah, Mike had like a $2 million chain that he lost somewhere. Well, like so did Mr. T. <laughs> Who's still around? I see Mr. T around. There's a um, there's a place, Mama's Barbecue around here that I always see him at. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I ran into him. He gave me a little keychain that had all the, you know, I pity the fool. Oh, really? <laughs> what did you say about my mama? Like. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, um, yeah, Mike, uh, I don't think it's really for the money, but I'm sure that Nobody would turn down money, and but I thought it was for a charity thing, but I could be wrong. Uh, Mike has been posting video recently mm -hmm. of him sparring, and might I say, Mike looks in tip-top shape. Yeah, well, Mike is 54, Roy Jones Jr. is 51. Mm -hmm. Roughly the same age, because originally, remember, he was supposed to fight, uh, Mike was supposed to fight... Holyfield, who's 57. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm glad that didn't happen. Why is that? I just don't want to. I just don't. It was, it's too kitschy. I don't I don't want them to do that again. They made they it was historic when they fought before. Just just leave it alone. Yeah, I guess uh I mean Roy Jones Jr. fought in a couple different weights. He actually was a, a light heavyweight at one point. You know, but he was also a middleweight, a super middleweight, and a cruiserweight. So like me, <laughs> <laughs> fluctuation. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I got my money on Mike, though. Yeah, me too. I think Mike's gonna kill him. Yeah, me too. I, I mean, I, I've seen him sparring recently. Like I'm saying he he looks tip top shape to me. I wouldn't want to take a punch from him. I don't care if he was 81. <laughs> I know, right? right? Have you met him before? Um. 
No. Never? No. I met Mike one time. It was in front of a soul food restaurant in Inglewood. You meet a lot of people that did food spots. I do. <laughs> I do. I do. I remember, and I was a mixtape DJ back then, and I had like this uh, this project with me and Game. It was like a DVD and a CD. So I walk up to him and say, hey, Mike, you know, I'm, I'm DJ Vlad. Um, you know, this is a, this is a, a mixtape that I did. He goes, oh, thank you. So you did this? I said, yeah. This was done by you. Mm-hmm. You're the one who did this. Yeah. This is your project. And he just kept doing that over and over again. Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, well, I don't want to piss this guy off. So I got to answer his question yeah. every time. But he asked me the same question about seven times. So I'm like, well, okay. he wanted to make sure. <laughs> I want to make sure that you no know, gray area here, no yeah, wiggle you room. You said this is you. This is all you. You did it, right? right. Like you, only you. Nobody only, backing you. Nobody you backing did it. Me. Just me. Right. <laughs> I'm with you, Mike. That's that's why I'm like Mike is wired a little differently. Well, that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. One of the all time greats. That's right. Hope he doesn't hurt himself. No, he's gonna be fine. Yeah. I, I've seen him sparring recently. <laughs> you need to go on his page. No, I've seen it. He, he's ripped up. He's looking good. Mike's fine, you know? He's leaving a lot of them bitches alone. And right, he's married now. Married, got kids. He looks like he's, you know, he's, he's been through a lot. He lost a kid. He's got kids. and He lost a kid? Yeah, I think he lost a kid. How? Look it up. You got your thing right there. I got my thing right here. Oh, okay. So in 2009, Mike Tyson lost his four-year-old daughter for what they call, the police said it was a tragic incident on a home treadmill. Wow. So anybody who's been through that can can fight. So I think Mike's going to be fine. Uh, so apparently she was playing on the treadmill and there was a cord underneath the treadmill and... I guess she it put the cord caught, around, around, her around her neck, neck. and the, and she basically got strangled yeah, by terrible. that cord. Wow, th- I, I must have missed this. I mean, this was 2009. It was 11 years ago. But, oh, man, to lose a four-year-old. I just I, I rem- uh, I remember. I remember. I remember he was just broke. He's been through a lot, you know, and he's a, he's a good guy. His show that he did on Broadway, which I thought was going to be trash, was amazingly hilarious, directed by Spike Lee. Huh, you saw it? I did. You went? I did. Okay. It was amazing. And then they put it on HBO, you know? And, I mean, I just never would have thought, but he remembered his stuff. He was very colorful in describing the situations, you know, back then. And uh, his love for Custom Motto and, you know, what him and Robin went through and the mom and all that stuff. And he did it in a really shitty but really funny, funny way. It was excellent. Kudos to you, Mike. That was that was a piece of work. Right. Remember, he had his own cartoon. Um, I don't Mike Tyson's Mysteries. You never watched that? No. It's actually good. Oh, well. I liked it. Had a little ensemble. He had like this pet pigeon. Now, I'm a Scooby Doo girl. <laughs> well, it was kind of like Scooby Doo. That's what I thought. It was it was like a Scooby Doo sort of parody in a way, but yeah. with Mike Tyson playing himself. You know, and that's like for example, like I've always said this, and people don't get on me on this, but whatever. Mike Tyson, who was this fearsome, you know, crazy individual in his earlier days, as he got older. He kind of reinvented himself because people all loved him. He reinvented himself, started doing different things, started, you know, calming down. He showed down. up in the hangover for God's Yeah, he sake. was in the hangover. He's got his own, you know, the podcast is doing well. Yeah. Like you said, the, you know, the, the Broadway show, the cannabis business and so forth. And everyone wants to work with him. Like, Suge Knight could have gone that same way. I don't know about that. I think so. If Suge Knight said, okay, my death row days are over, I lost the company, I'm going to be the cool guy that, you know, changes my Yeah, but you just said image. everybody want to work with Mike. Everybody don't want to work with Suge. A lot of people want to work with Suge. Suge, so, Suge was such an interesting think, character. You mean then? Well, I'm saying if Suge stopped being Suge. And well, he then just, he wouldn't be Suge. He would still be Suge. Part Shug. of Suge <laughs> was the... the 
legendary, you know, asshole that he was. I mean, Mike Tyson was legendary for punching people out. Well, that don't make him an asshole. That just make him not take no shit. But he he fight people in public like well people were picking on him like whose side do you want if you're Mike Tyson <laughs> when you go out motherfuckers you know get up in your face want to challenge you want to talk shit and might just want to go out and have a good time and people was always in his face fucking with him I know people be in my face fucking with me and I be <laughs> wanting to punch somebody the fuck out too well look at the end of the day Mike is doing well uh, yes, he is. You know, Shug, unfortunately, is doing 28 years. And then, you know, life life is what it is. Uh, I wish Mike the best, though. I hope that he... Uh, you gonna watch the fight? Of course. <laughs> of course. Of course. Of course. There is really... For people of my age, you know, I'm 47. Mike oh, Tyson oh, is the on, biggest... <laughs> Mike Tyson is the biggest boxer of my lifetime. I'm a little too young for Muhammad Ali. For Ali. Not to say that Ali wasn't a bigger figure, because in many ways he was. Well, he was, yeah. But for someone of my age, by the time I started watching sure. boxing, Ali was already on, retired yeah, on yeah. the way out. I never got to see any Ali fights live. But I got to see a lot of Tyson fights live. Yeah. Well, they didn't last very long. Right, 30 seconds. Because the whole I remember the whole Tyson era of going to Vegas getting the suite, getting dressed up, you know, washing the car and doing all that and going to Vegas and getting your tick, you know, having your ticket ahead of time and getting the champagne and getting in your seat and, you know, in less than 10 minutes it's over and you're right. back out in the lobby. That happened time and time and time again. <laughs> yeah, but it was the biggest thing ever. I mean, remember yeah, of course. remember Tupac's murder happened during a Tyson fight. Right. You know, right after after uh, yeah, I mean, Tyson was the most exciting fighter. Yeah. He would knock people out in the first round. Yeah. And he had such a crazy... Iron Mike uh, Tyson. Yeah, he had such a crazy personality. He would say outlandish stuff. He, you know, the Robin Givens thing, the beating up Don King, then going to prison and coming out. For and, the alleged rape. Yeah, for the alleged rape. Do you think that was all BS? Yes. Why so? Why so? Because, let me choose my words carefully on this. Here we go. Now, if you're a chick and you go to a guy's room at 3 o'clock in the morning and the guy's Mike Tyson, or any celebrity male for that matter, um, you can get in there with all intentions to screw and then decide you don't want to screw and if they still take the pussy, it is still rape. I'm going to mm -hmm. say that. Yes. However, if you go to one of these guys' rooms at 3 o'clock in the morning and you're in Vegas or wherever and there's a lot of alcohol consumed maybe by both parties, you are putting yourself in a position for some shit to go wrong. So, as the grandma and them used to say, ain't nothing open at 3 o'clock in the morning but some legs. Well, <laughs> you know, that may be true. But I, I, I don't, I wasn't in the room with Mike, but I'm just saying that the young lady put herself in a precarious position for something to go wrong. And, um, you know, when you get caught up sometime in a predicament that may be embarrassing or whatever like that. You always want to take the heat off yourself. I don't know what happened. I wasn't in the room. But I, I'm i just saying that, you know, he got sentenced really harshly. And, um, you know, I don't think he had necessarily a jury of his peers. And so there's things that lead me to believe that it may not went down exactly as portrayed. Well, uh, the alleged victim was uh, Miss Black, Rhode Island, Desiree Washington. Mm. At the time, she was 18 years old. Mm -hmm. This is not a 30-year-old that's been around the block and, and knows the deal. She's still a teenager. Well, teenagers should behave as teenagers. And if you are indeed a teenager, you ain't got no business going up to a hotel room with the heavyweight champion of the world at 3 o'clock in the morning. There's that. 
I think Claudia, uh, Claudia Jordan, I guess, was, uh, I think she testified at that trial or, or she was involved in that. I guess the girl called her. I guess she was in a similar uh, beauty pageant or whatever and they knew each other. Mm-hmm. I guess the girl called her and she was, I think she was called as a witness or a deposition or something like that. Well, you know, I'm not, I'm not uh, trying to make the victim be the victim again, you know, uh, and um, be like, well, you shouldn't be doing that. But you shouldn't be doing that just out of regular, uh, I mean, hell, I've done it, but it wasn't the right thing to do. And she did it. Nobody wheeled her up to the room. She went up there all by herself, yeah. you know, but I'm not saying that anybody deserves any kind of sexual assault, whether you're drunk, sober, whether it's three in the morning or 12 noon. But I'm just saying that there are ways to avoid shit like that, and that is don't go. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough because you, there's no cameras in someone's private room. You don't know what happened. And a lot of times women will have sex with a man and then regret it afterwards. Right. And then they're like, well. God knows I've done that a million times. (laughs) Right. I mean, in fact, like, I was talking to someone uh, about this. I'm not going to say who it is. It's a very famous, famous person. And he was explaining to me how in 2020, begging for pussy is technically considered rape because it's coercion. <laughs> well, Th- there is not a man alive that does not beg for pussy. L- let me let me just, you know, because if that's the case, Jodeci just needs to be locked up because they're all their albums were about that anyway, so... <laughs> Bruno doesn't have to beg for pussy. Bruno Mars? Mm-mm. It's right there for him. No, he does not have to <laughs> beg for pussy. But I'm sure he has begged for pussy before he became Bruno Mars. Well, he's been Bruno Mars so long that I don't even think he had to beg for pussy when he was a little kid dressed like Elvis. I don't think he had to beg for pussy then. Every he's man has begged for pussy. But let me think. Every Who man has begged for pussy. pussy. Have Al be sure had to beg for pussy? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Did Elvis have to beg for He had to beg for Priscilla. Every man has begged he for pussy. He had to beg, beg for Priscilla. He I mean, when she was underage. Right. What about that? Yeah. People like to gloss that one over. Did Woody, Woody Allen have to beg for pussy? He grew it up right there in the house with him. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. I, I, I posted a picture on my Instagram last week of good old Woody and Soon Yi, then and now, with the caption that I didn't write. I just reposted it. And I think one of Woody's kids, one of his daughters slid up in my DM all pissed off and shit. Oh. He wanted me to take it down. Hmm. I said, I'll take it down. You took it down? Yeah. Why? So I put it right back up if I want to. <laughs> well, you know who doesn't? I mean, because, you know, the girl, it, it you know, the, the, the pedophile is her daddy. And, you know, if she feels some type of way about her daddy, I went ahead on and took the damn thing down. But, I mean, 127,000 people had seen it already anyway. <laughs> so, what the- <laughs> Well, Bill Cosby didn't have to beg for pussy. Apparently not. It was laid right out there for him. Right. I mean, he didn't have to beg for pussy, and he didn't have to drop any pills for pussy either. Right. Well, I'm saying, but, you know, if the girl's unconscious, you don't have to beg at that point. Well, right. But you had to lure her to come to the room. Sinbad kind of uh, defended Bill a little bit. Looking at what's going on now, you know, what is your heart? How does your heart feel about how no, this legacy is, is ended my up? My heart today? is broke. My heart, my heart is broke. You know, it's like finding us. You know, your heart's broke. It's it's beyond anger. My heart is broke because now everything he good at did is tossed. It's tossed. It's tossed yeah. out the window. The it's, thing, it's tossed out the window. And the thing for me is, I was riding with the whole conspiracy. You know, I rolled. Yeah, I rolled. I, I know you were, Lou. Lou, I know you were. I rolled with Dick Gregory. I rolled with Paul Mooney. I'm like, he was trying to be by CBS. They 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 had it in for him. This is all a plot, this thing, until the deposition. When he did the deposition, he admitted that he did the shit. Now, this is a man who went to Temple, who was an athlete, who was fine, who, who ran track. He looked good. 
He did I Spy with Robert Cope. He could have got any parts of any pussy in Hollywood. So for him to admit that he wanted to get, that he did, in fact, give girls, you know, thigh gappers, then there is, uh, you know, this, this is how you can't judge a book by its cover because, you well, know, and wanting to wanting to have sex with sedated women is one heartbeat, well, let me, let me, let's, heartbeat let's, let's away the from necrophilia. Let's say what let's say what the deposition was. Let's get something straight. Okay. He said I gave women quaaludes. No, we got this. Let's break this down. What he's saying. That's like the modern day person in the late eighties, night saying I gave girls cocaine. Back in the day when I was on, in comedy. And in late 80s, uh, from 85, 86 on, <clears throat> cocaine was the thing. If a comic came up with the cocaine, he got he got hooked up. Comic came with the cocaine. I, I heard waitress like this, oh, he's bringing the cocaine. I said, he's using cocaine because some of these cats were some ugly cats. Cocaine was that thing. Now, when Cosby was coming up, well, I think what threw everybody up about Cosby, he says, I gave women quaaludes like this. Cosby doing drugs? I said, y'all, we got to remember, he's a human being. I said, I don't think anybody took quaaludes. They didn't want to take quaaludes. Quaaludes was the cocaine of that time. Whoever brought the quaaludes, they call them ludes. Remember back in the day, who bringing ludes to the party? Somebody bringing ludes. So I don't think that's the thing that got him in trouble. It's other things. But the ludes, I think those who saw him as the American dad said, Cosby wouldn't do no drugs. He must have brought no drug to women. I said, well, how do we know? How do we know that? Because we didn't know the other things. So when people tell me it was, he said he gave him quaaludes. Quaaludes was a party drug. Quaaludes is where everybody gathered in the back, men and women. Give me the ludes. Give me some of these ludes. Who got the ludes? Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying that. Listen, Bill, from what I hear, back in the day, giving chicks quaaludes and stuff like that was like these kids, you know, taking E now or smoking maybe weed or whatever like that. It was common. A lot of people did it, I guess. That's what they say. Now, whether you want your women wet and squirming or laying there like a corpse is a personal choice. <laughs> and I don't think that, that that's when you get into some twisted shit. I was not ready for that. Well, because that's well, no, I was not ready for hey, that. <laughs> Having a chick on roofies or something is like two breaths away from necrophilia, is it not? Necrophilia is a thing. For yeah. those who don't know, that means men or women, for that matter, who like to have sex with corpses, with dead people. Which apparently you can catch cancer for if you don't use a condom. Uh, Leave the jokes to the professor. No, 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 I'm like, serious. I'm actually... Cancer. You could actually from catch... From the corpse? Yep. Yep. Cancer from necro. Yeah, no, I was not being funny. Hold on a second. Yeah, I'd actually heard about this. Some some guy, like in a funeral home. Got cancer from a dead person? Yep. Cancer. Cancer. Not gonorrhea? No. Actual cancer. Not syphilis. What type of cancer? Don't Hold say on. lung. Hold on. Uh... Hold on. Holding. Holding. <laughs> Holding. You sure you read that right? Uh, I can't find it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, nature just has a way of doing things to avoid you doing, you know, basically has a way of creating situations to avoid you doing things you shouldn't be doing. Like, for example, inbreeding. <laughs> you know, there's a reason why you shouldn't sleep with your sister. <laughs> it's because the baby will come out with two heads, right? Yeah, so, not always. Not always. Not always. But... But who wants to risk more it? More often, more often than you would like. <laughs> well. So yeah. so what I'm saying is I'm pretty sure there are various diseases you could get if you're out there having sex with corpses. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Let's change the subject. Let's change the subject. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> We've got all left field. Yeah, we're it. all somewhere to fuck. I don't know where we are. <laughs> Snoop and DMX had their versus battle the other saw day. It, saw it. Saw I watched it. part of it. Yeah, I don't watch all of it. I watched most of it though. I dug it. Yeah, I did too. I like. I like how Snoop would actually back up DMX. Yeah. And his songs. Yeah. And- because it was a mutual respect. It was. It, it wasn't, was. no, I'm going to get your ass. I'm gonna, they just went, you know, because, I mean, I, I love them both. Yeah. I made a movie with DMX. What movie? It's called Never Die Alone. Aha. Uh-huh. It's, well, it's a Donald Goins book that they made into a movie. The only Donald Goins book that's been made into a film. Clifton Powell was in it as well. Mm. So was Mike Ely. And David Arquette. David Arquette, yep. And um, DMX actually produced it. Yeah, I, I, I'm in it. And it was the only um, movie that I have to date. Well, maybe the second film out of all my films that's not a comedy. Like I was one of the only ones left living at the end of the movie. <laughs> Everybody got fucked up in that movie. A lot of guns, a lot of dope. Because it was Donald Goins' book. I interviewed DMX once, and he was the most animated person I've ever interviewed. I just had to press the record button and just let him be DMX. It was it was the most. I don't even know how to just amazing experience. He started doing push ups. He started dancing to a Marion. He lifted his well, shirt he up. Well, he's using food push ups now because from what I saw on the uh, yeah verses, he's got know. a gut. Yeah, he's obviously off the pipe because his belly bigger than mine. <laughs> <laughs> it's, my, it's, my, it's, my, it's my Marion video. Hold on, hold on, wait, I gotta do this. We know each other all the time. I'm being so Yeah, I do the rap and all that, you know what I'm saying? You know, movies all that. But I'm a real nigga in the heart. That's how real niggas get down. You know what I mean? Nice. 50. 50. It's nothing. Friday. It's nothing. 50. It's still five. Yeah, he's a little heavy. But that a- might be a good sign, though, you know. But yeah. he do look like a grandpa. I do pre- Prefer Slimmer DMX. And then next to Snoop, Snoop looked like the normal little green bean that he be looking like. But they was killing it. So who do you pick, DMX or Snoop? I, I didn't watch the whole thing. Okay, but, but it I seemed like you saw. From what I saw, I don't know. I mean, I guess Snoop had a bigger catalog. Snoop has a way bigger catalog. He's that, got that's more That's the hits. thing. Yeah. DMX came out on fire. I know. Oh, fire, but then life kind of caught up with DMX. You know, all the prison time, all the drugs. Yeah, all the babies. All the babies. I, uh, I, My whole goal in life is to, uh, to learn all the words so they don't know who we be and come out and do that on stage because they ain't got no chicks doing that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I interviewed uh, DMX's ex-wife at to one share point. Up. Mm-hmm. Very nice lady. I was on a, we were on a cruise together. We took a cruise together. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Very nice lady. But, you know, she told me flat out, I mean, DMX was, you know, addicted to crack before he ever got on as an artist. And, you know, he would just disappear for days and, you know, and he would rob people for drugs and and so forth. And yet she stayed for many, 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 many years. She actually told me, I think that the, the breaking point with her was when he had yet another baby mm-hmm. outside the marriage. And yeah. then he claimed the woman raped him. And she just said, okay, I'm, I'm done. Yeah, I, that I, was I like the sixth baby he had had outside the marriage. Yeah. I mean, Tashira's made a steal because I'd have, I'd have been so gone. Yeah. I feel you. Mm-mm. I feel you. Well, Joe Biden yesterday said that Trump is the first racist to be elected president. Incorrect. Let me give you a little breakdown here. Yeah. All the earliest presidents had slaves. <laughs> George Washington had 300 of them. Thomas Jefferson, who called slavery an assemblage of horrors, had 175 slaves himself. 
Uh, James Madison, James Monroe, Andrew Jackson had a couple couple dozen slaves. Uh, Martin Van Buren owned slaves. William Henry Harrison owned some slaves. John Tyler and James Polk had slaves. Zachary Tyler, who was president from 49 to 1849 to 1850, was the last president to keep slaves. He owned 150 of them on his plantations in Kentucky, Mississippi, and Louisiana. So as bad as Trump is, I would not say that he's the only racist to be elected president. Oh, yeah, president. okay. As I was going to say, he probably got some slaves too. Kanye, for sure. But, um... Uh, <laughs> Yo, you're not catching to me mention today. the babies that they made, that they raped slaves and made. Right. Okay? And that little history lesson wasn't for me, because I knew... It was for the wonderful listeners out there, because I already knew. And even though you may not have slaves, you may have people enslaved. And that's what Donald has right now. He has enslaved a certain demographic of people's mind mm -hmm. right now. And they can't see nothing, nothing else. They're not open to discussion. They're not open to critical thinking. They're just doing what they're told. Wear the mask, don't wear the mask. Black lives matter, black lives don't matter. You know, grab a woman by the pussy. Don't grab a woman by the pussy. Yeah, there's more COVID cases because we're doing more tests. Yes, Chinese Bible. <laughs> I'm not, you know, the minorities. And let me get this Bible. Oops, it's upside down. Let me stand in front. <laughs> Fuck out of here. I never thought that in my lifetime, growing up with all the racism in the U.S., but I never thought that a sitting president would actually post a video of someone saying white power. But Donald Trump has surprised us once again by doing that. Yeah. He and, he yeah. and he will not display Barack Obama's presidential portrait in, in the, the White foyer House. in the White House where it's supposed to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, psh. I actually, you know, I email the head of, I don't know what they call it, like black uh, media for the Republican Party. Is there such a thing? Yeah. Yeah, there's a guy, there's a black guy who wears a MAGA hat, who's in charge of basically sending information about the Republican Party to media outlets. And, and I'm one of those media outlets. So, so I've exchanged emails with him. So I said... How do you as a black man feel about the president putting a video that says white power? And his response was, the president took, took the video down. It was an accident. He took it down immediately, which was the, the correct uh, choice. Uh, the president does not support racism in, in any mm. capacity, blah, 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 blah. And you think he mm. don't own slaves? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know how this guy goes back to his family <laughs> after defending this guy. I, I just I just don't do it. Cookouts must be pretty pretty awkward. <laughs> He's not invited to the cookout. Neither are Diamond and Silk oh, yeah. or whoever them two old R and B ass bitches that he got from uh, some Soul Train line somewhere. The bag wig wearing ass bitches that <laughs> fucking support him. They're not invited to the cookout, and neither are these poor brainwashed Jesus freak black folks that went out and threw paint on a Black Lives Matter city ordained, uh, uh, you know, paint, paint, painting in the street. That really, really hurt. I'm like, boy, some of us are just. Um, I I like to think they were paid. That I like to put everything on money. Like, oh, they paid them. To act like that, but no, you know, them and the Jesse Lee Petersons of the world and stuff like that, um, they really believe that he has our best interests at heart, which is so insane since he is the flame that lit the fire under the biggest race war that we are facing, which is now ever in the, since uh, Nat Turner. Yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, the Black Lives Matter protest was the biggest protest in the world's history. In the world's history. Yeah. A hundred something countries, every state. Because you know what happened was with George Floyd and when everything started, it, it broke the dam, just like the, the, the dam that, that broke in New, or in New Orleans, mm -hmm. Katrina. It broke the dam everywhere. Because what makes you think, now, the United States may be the cheerleader in the face of racism, but you think there's not racism in Canada? You think there's not racism in Amsterdam? You think there's not racism in China? You think there's not racism in Korea? You got black military over there? You got bl black folks everywhere get fucked everywhere, basically. So everybody said, yeah, us too. It was like the Black Lives Matter Me Too movement of the world. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. But we're not going to take it anymore, not like that. We can't cure this overnight. We may not cure this in my lifetime. But the way that it was happening is still going to happen until we become equal and empower of stuff. But the way that it has happened, it ain't gonna happen like that no more because we're calling people out on shit. Other people are, are other nationalities have our back, you know, as much as they can. And they're getting involved as well because through the miracle of these video cameras, everything we've been saying was going on is finally being documented. Oh yeah, how many George Floyds were there before cameras. Or how many have there been since him with cameras? Yeah. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. Like, when you saw that video, did you cry? I was too shocked to cry then. But I cried later. Yeah. And especially, I felt the same way. I had the same horrible feeling when George was calling for his mother, as I did when Eric Holder kept nip, kicked Nip in the head. It just took me to my, my knees. And it was like, you know, some things you can't unsee. And um, I wish I could unsee it, but, cause I don't want, you know, his kids, you know, it's, this shit is generational, what we're into right now. It's affecting the generations that was before us. It's affecting the generations after us. Because on top of the race war, let's throw in a pandemic. Mm -hmm. So now you got kids that whole 2020, whether they graduated this year, whether they just started dating this year, just learned how to drive this year, or anything that happened this year has been overridden by the fact that they're in a quarantine. They can't see each other. They can't, are not supposed to socialize with each other, stay in the house with grandma. And uh, this is, it, we're in a, in a big, big shithole right now. Yeah, I agree. I agree. We're still in it. Yeah, we're in it. We're going to be in it. Yeah, we're, this is the new normal right now. Yeah, and let me tell you what else is normal. People know me for my, like, my nails and stuff like that that mm -hmm. I had all through my career. You know, my long, uh, illustrious nails that were so bejeweled and expensive. And um, during the quarantine, of course, nail shops were closed and couldn't get our nails done. And, you know, they grew out, so I just cut them. And, uh, you know, I don't care about, about that because you can go to the nail shop and have them back the next day. But, and people were asking me, well, Danelle, when you go back to work, are you going to get your nails back, you know? And I'm like, yeah, when I go back to work, work, whenever that is, I said, but for now, I'm keeping these nails exactly the way they are because I'm just waiting to run up on a Karen or a Chad <laughs> or a Skip or Barbie or any of them bitches because they be the met the right one when they fuck with me. Then you have not seen the Instagram video that's going to happen if one of them fucks with me. I am going back to jail. I'm going to make that prophecy right now. And this time I ain't going to stay there as long as I got friends I can call. But I'm definitely going back to jail because I'm not for any of the snide remarks, the looks, the dirty bullshit, the coughing on people or the the name calling or any of that fucking shit. I'm not for any of that. And I've got enough 
rage in me to where I know that I'm going to hurt somebody. This isn't a threat. This is a promise. You know, because we, we've just been so fed up for so long. We got raised that stems back to when we were in elementary school that we need to take out on somebody. And we walk around with that shit every day. Every day. What do you think of the term Karen? I think it's uh, perfect. I, I used to say Carol in my act mm. when referring to, you know, upper crust, uh, white, bougie women. Uh, I think Karen is unfortunate for the Karens that are out there that don't act in a Karen-ish <laughs> way. But uh, I think it's appropriate. It's It doesn't match the N-word. Right, because I remember I had Godfrey on. And yeah. I asked him what he thought about people saying that Karen is even worse than the N-word. Because, because sexism has been around longer than racism. That's ridiculous. Um Karens, calling someone a Karen doesn't equate with them being lynched and raped and beaten. It just means that you are uh, out of your mind white, with your white privilege and you have the audacity to try to tell other people what to do and you definitely don't like being told what to do yourself and that's what we've decided to call you and it's sticking, nothing you can do about it. But it, it is nothing compared to be being called a nigger. And if somebody calls me that, I'm not going to turn around and retaliate with honky or cracker or Karen or none of that. We're going to fight. That's it. Period. I don't, I don't care if it's a man. Well, uh, we had actually did an interview uh, with Godfrey. And I asked him that same question about Karen and the N-word. And um, Leslie Jones from uh, Saturday, Saturday Night Live actually posted the video uh, on her Instagram. Uh, I'll go ahead and play you a little clip Play here. it for me, because I love Godfrey. White girls, some of you mo most, your motherfuckers are Decepticons. And they call, and this lady said, white women said that calling... Calling us Karens are like calling us the N word. Ah! <laughs> 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 it's like calling us the fucking N word. You have got to be fucking kidding me. You know why? Because I'll switch. I'll switch, please. Please, yeah. call me Karen. Yes. And I'll call you nigga. <laughs> you can switch. Wouldn't that be great to call a white woman nigga? These fucking niggers, I tell you. These fucking... Hey, brother, you are, you, are you dating a nigga? Oh, my God. A white... I'll switch. Call me a Karen. These fucking Karens. I'll take Karen any day. It... I... I excuse me, but Karen and nigga, two different things. Thank I'll you. I'll take Karen... Any day, Thank call me you. a fucking Karen. It's, in fact, call me a Derek. Call me a, a Rondell. Call me a Deontay. <laughs> I would rather change racial slurs to names that the people of that race have. That's Shout my, out to Godfrey. That's my man. That's my man. I ride with him all day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kanye West is somewhat running for president, I guess. He couldn't get on the poll in South Carolina after doing his, his rally, which from what I understand was completely disorganized. <laughs> to say the least. To say the least. Uh, he got on stage. Uh, he cried about his dad wanting to abort him. And then, in typical Kanye fashion, he said, Harriet Tubman didn't free the slaves. She just sent them to go work for another white man. Al, what you want me to say? <laughs> I, I don't know. Kanye is clearly off his meds. Again. Again. And um, his attempt to run for president yet again made another mockery of our government system or the government system, not ours. Um, 
That was never an option. That was never a thing. And uh, when he said, what he said about Harriet Tubman was atrocious because even though the freed black slaves did work for white folk, maybe for a while, it was to get their coin, which they never got before, so they could maybe start some of their own free businesses. Because you can't start a business with nothing. And when free, slaves were freed, they were freed with nothing, i.e. our reparations are still in the midst. Because they didn't say, well, we're going to let you go, and we're going to give you that little corner plot back there, and put a little shit on there for you and your family, and y'all can grow you some corn or some hogs or something. They was like, run, nigga. You're free. Go run off into the woods. See what the fuck you you can do with nothing. Well, in fact, the the slaves weren't actually freed until two years after the Emancipation Proclamation. Some. Well, because that was when the South officially lost the war. Mm -hmm. So even though there was an Emancipation Proclamation, the South continued to keep their slaves because they yeah. felt like they were their own country at that point and Lincoln... Lincoln's rules didn't apply to them anymore. And the slaves couldn't read no goddamn way, so they didn't know what was being written right. anyway. Yeah. And although what I think Kanye was saying was that, I don't know. I, you know, so I, I, I'm not going like, to like I'm you're not trying defend, to figure uh, out yeah, what I, I, the I, fuck I, Kanye I'm, was I'm saying? Trying, I'm trying to figure you're out. You're wasting a brain cell <laughs> on that? Right, because although you are technically working for another white man, you could wake up that morning and quit that job. Can't really quit slavery. Can't say I'm not coming into slavery today. Because does what does, does does Kanye have any white executives that have anything to do with the music that he putting out? Because he too is working for the white man and sleeping with the white woman. Oop! Almost knocked over the microphone. Because this really reminded me of the whole slavery is a choice. I can't really talk about him because it makes my ears hot. <laughs> really, I'm starting to get that that feeling I get when I'm I'm about to flip out. So <laughs> I can't talk about Kanye, please. Well, Dave Make Chappelle me pull my fucking hair out of my head. <laughs> Dave Chappelle went out to visit him. That was a real awkward video. Remember, he was like, "Yeah, uh, do a joke for us." <laughs> Dave's like, what the, "I can't just do a joke like." <laughs> Yeah, what about that? Um, what about that little uh, project Dave Chappelle dropped in everybody's lap? Uh yeah, eight minutes forty six seconds. Uh huh. I dug it. Me too. You want you want to know what went through my mind when I saw it? What's that? Okay, so I am picturing his neighbors and the good people of his little town, right? Where do you live? Oklahoma. Ohio. I think. Ohio. Yeah. yeah, one of them O's, and the white O places. So his neighbors are like, you know, maybe he put up flyers around the town or whatever. Look, John, our neighbor Dave, you know that guy? That com comedian guy's got that show, Dave? Yeah, he's doing some comedy in the park. Oh, my God, let's go. I've been so cooped up in the house. <laughs> this is a very cheap night. We can just grab a bottle of Chardonnay and let's go see Dave. I'm so sick of these kids and I'm so sick of all this Black Lives Matter stuff. Let's go see Dave and he'll make us laugh. He's so funny. Oh, I hope he does some of those characters that he does on that show. And then they went out there with their Moscato and their Chardonnay and they sat down in the park with the lovely lights and everything and Dave Chappelle proceeded to bitch slap every one of them motherfuckers <laughs> into a new reality. They, you could hear a rat piss on cotton. There wasn't that much laughter out there and that, that much laughter I think was nervous laughter. Dave started going down to, listen, he's got a three part thing coming out too. Do you know about that? I assume he's got more stuff because if you if you notice that that Dave Chappelle special, yeah, which was produced by Netflix, yes, didn't come out on Netflix, right? Came out on YouTube, right? Netflix said, "Uh, Netflix got scurred, got scurred, right? Netflix got scurred, which is too bad. I think it should have came out on Netflix. Well, I do too, but you know what? Fuck it. 
and he got it out anyway and everybody seen it anyway it's not about who it's about when and where and he dropped it and they sat there and the white folks were sitting there. <laughs> it's like when i used to go see paul mooney and Mooney would have them white folks in a flux, and the black folks would just be hollering, cracking up, and them white folks would be uptight. That's what it reminded me of, and I'm sure they choked on their little Chardonnay or whatever when he got through with that one. <laughs> you know, it's like, and I kicked him in the ding-ding. Thank you, and good night. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, the, the 846 special on uh, YouTube got 27 million views. And, so, and it'll get 27 million more. Right, so it got out there. Yeah, of course. But I'm telling you, he's got a three-part thing coming out that's really going. I don't know who's going. I don't know where that's coming out at. But I've I've seen the an advertisement for it, but I have to go and look at it again because that's going to really go into Hollywood and a lot of the bullshit going on right here. Well, Kanye was talking about Kim throughout his rants, yeah. his his Twitter rants. He called. Um, Chris Jenner, Chris Jung Un. Yeah. And he's talking about, you know, divorcing and he's like, yo, uh, my daughter will never be in Playboy. Because remember, when Chris, when Kim Kardashian did Playboy, her mom was right there taking pictures of her and, and filming it behind the scenes. Which kind of turns my stomach, honestly. It's like going to see your daughter at the strip club. Right. Well, that's exactly what it's like. Yeah. I remember this one thing. I remember the one thing that really just kind of just gave me such a nasty, icky feeling was when Chris was talking about uh, Kylie Jenner and um, what's her sister's name? Kendall and Kendall Jenner. She goes, yeah, you know, and these two girls just have the perfect bodies. And I'm just like, yo, like th these are your kids. Like, what are, you, what are you talking about right now? You shouldn't even, even be talking about their bodies it's like almost like salivating oh yeah more more people to pimp that's <laughs> why they had no use for fat rob yeah rob got fat and he was off the show mm -hmm. by choice and probably by 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 unanimous decision and then now i think he's coming back and i think he's lost some weight now and he's gonna be allowed back into the fold they have no time for unpretty motherfuckers. They're trying to uh, dance on the nerve of everybody in America and make this money. But see, uh, that too is going to come to a halt. Because I think that a halt, I mean, I think that one of the things that this quarantine and stuff has taught us, or and I could be wrong, because some people may be thirsting more for the stuff they couldn't get during quarantine, but I think that quarantine for anybody who took away anything good from it, let us know that you really can live without Kim Kardashian, you know, perfume, and you really can live without that Birkin bag, and you really can live without all this um, materialistic stuff, and you can still live a great and wonderful life without all that shit, and that we've been watching CNN, and we've been watching you know, Roland Martin, and we've been watching Don Lemon, and all this stuff, and we've not been, you know, it's just not a time for a lot of twerking and bullshit right now. That's got its place. It's on Michael Blackson's Instagram page. That's where, <laughs> that's where that, all that lives. But it's just, you know, you have to, uh, I think our mind and our body, we've been eating different and everything, is in a different place than trying to follow and keep up with the fucking Kardashians right now. Right, because have you seen Chloe after all the plastic surgery? Like, yeah, she just looks like a totally different human being. Like, I, I've never seen anything this extreme before. Well, she's got too much in her ass. That's, yeah, we, we noticed that first. If you want to get a little ass, she already had an ass. If you want to get a little ass, get a little ass. But the ass she's got right now is, you know, c circus ready. <laughs> and she was already a cute girl. She had a complex. Been, they've been calling her the fat one all her goddamn life. So she wanted to. I, I don't think recarve that. Recarve herself. Let, let me just tell you. I like her the best anyway. Right. But let me just say that that is not Kim and Courtney's 
full sibling. I'm sorry. There's a different father. I, I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry. She don't look nothing like her sisters. She does. Cut well, it listen, out. They Cut wouldn't. It out. Okay. She looks nothing like her sisters. She, she don't even look nothing like the the, the Jenners. Like she looks completely. But she don't different. look like OJ either. I'm not saying that's OJ's kid. Right. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying that there's someone in well, there. Well, Chris Jenner did get around. I mean, it's pretty uh, apparent. Yeah, that's like what I'm get, saying. Like to get her fuck on because you know she got like what 19 goddamn kids. Yeah. And. She was, you know, in that big old cocaine swingers club back in uh, the day with Nicole and and uh, her little friends, you know, Faye Resnick and all them, all bosom buddies, well documented, this ain't nothing I'm making up. And, you know, they might have swapped out a bit or whatever like that. And she had a couple, you know, a couple of husbands. She drove her last husband, never mind. Well, this comes to my next point. The Kardashian curse. Kanye West, completely off, crazy. The rock, completely off the crazy off his rockers. Lamar Odom, lost it the whole entire time. Became a crackhead and ended up almost dying in a, in a brothel. He became a crackhead again because he had been a crackhead before. Scott Disick, loser, alcoholic, drug alcoholic, addict, in and out of rehab, in and out of rehab, won't stay. Bruce Jenner became a woman. The only person who you can't include in this list is Travis Scott. But Travis doesn't seem like he's really in the mix with those with those uh and and don't forget little little Corey. Who? Corey Gamble? <laughs> don't forget little Corey. Yeah. Well, we don't really know much about Corey. But Corey doesn't have kids with any of them. Well, you have to have balls to do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if if Kim and Kanye get divorced, the Kardashians will have a 100% failure rate when it comes to marriage. Well, well, well here's the other thing. I, I don't, I, if Kim divorces him or she don't divorce him, she probably at this point can get him declared mentally insane and take over his whole music catalog too. Hmm. Now, cause why? Just think, why would somebody have four children with a certifiable lunatic? Did she have the first one? Okay, she had you know North or whatever, beautiful. Then she had the Saint. Okay, that's there's a boy and a girl. But why did she have? To, why did she? Why was she so pressed to have to have two more in a family of a bajillion kids? Anyway, you talk about securing a bag. She's trying to secure the bag, the suitcase, the mattress, the bed frame. <laughs> She's trying to secure the roller skates, the skateboard, the truck that the bag came in and, on, and the, all of it. She wants it all. She wants it all. She wants it all. Well, remember um, before. The whole breakdown with Kanye, Chance the Rapper, was actually uh, supporting Kanye's presidency. And he was all gung-ho until Terry Crews co-signed him. <laughs> and then he was like, okay, let me get off this hill. Never mind. <laughs> you, you, gotta, you really got to give it to someone. To be a black man who other black men will, can get other black men to change their mind simply by supporting them. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like Terry Crews co-signing you will make you not want to do what you were planning on doing. <laughs> <laughs> Say, damn, if Terry's riding with me. Ah, uh, maybe I made a mistake. Uh, let me <laughs> let me rethink this whole situation. <laughs> oh, Terry. Oh. What do you think about Terry's whole black supremacy thing? Um. I think that Terry is trying to stay employed, not rock no boats, and say whatever he thinks is going to unify the people. I think he's mistaken in his delivery. I think he probably meant well, but it, it went all to shit. Right, because remember, uh, Terry did the Snoop roast with you. 
Yes. I was there. Yeah. And back then, people were kind of fucking with Terry. People liked Terry. Yeah. People would like Terry again if he would keep his mouth shut. You think people like Terry again? People will like Terry again at some point, just like Monique. Everybody, Monique and blah, 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 fuck Monique and all that. And every goddamn thing Monique was talking about has come to pass. I got my own issues. I mean, everybody do. Well, with Monique's husband, really. Oh, well, yeah, but see, that's not Monique. I guess you could assume that. They're they're entangled, but that's not. Right, you know, a, I, the, you she, know, she she was talking about gender e- inequality and financial inequality, and now you have Viola Davis and everybody speaking out about the same thing she was talking about, and you got Gab Union suing AGT, mm-hmm. and um, is she suing? Oh yeah. Well, and Terry was the one that was defending AGT. Yeah. He said, there was no Terry racism. Terry don't give a fuck. He's got to keep that bag. Keep that bag. He got to keep that bag. And that motherfucker said, y'all go head on. But I'm going to play the um, <laughs> Sam Jackson role in Django. And I'm going to stay right here. <laughs> right. I remember I interviewed Earthquake. And I asked him about that. Because, you know, he was on uh, Everybody Hates Chris with uh, Terry Crews. <laughs> Earthquake, Earthquake said, Terry's probably like, oh, it's cold out there. <laughs> I'm trying to stay indoors. It's cold out there. <laughs> I mean, it just seems like <laughs> Terry just has this history of pandering to the white community. <laughs> Terry, Terry, Terry says, it's cold out there. <laughs> Terry, Terry says, it's cold out there, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't want to go out there. He I like leave, it here. He don't want to leave that out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I mean, and I'm not saying house and I'm talking about to lose. I mean, he's not taking that chance that he lose the status. I don't know. But that particular one that we talked about, I had it on my show. And I put that situation to comedians that was there. Because all of us strive to get that opportunity and then to have a network um, support you by putting you in the lead in of their number one show and give you 13 episodes. And it could change your life, all you working for. And this man grabs you. And you know if you retaliate right there, you lost all that that you're working for. Are you going to do it or you not? And I put that on out there for him. Right. <laughs> He's not doing nothing and defending nobody that's going to interrupt his fucking bag. Yep. He's trying to step right into Nick's shoes. I was interviewed by The Breakfast Club, and they asked me what I thought about the I'm Nick Cannon situation. I'm going to have to situation. look that up. The Breakfast that? Club got a hold of you? Yeah. Yeah. What? Well, I have a I have a podcast, a new a new podcast that I partnered with iHeart on. So I ran went on a media run. You know, I don't usually get interviewed by people, but I went right. on a media run. Uh, I was on Breakfast Club. I was on Big Boy. What? Uh, I was on No Jumper. You was not on Big Boy. I was on Big Boy. Oh my! I gotta yeah. go home and do some work. Yeah, now. go look it up. I'll send you I'll the links. Do. Okay. Yeah. Do that. Yeah. I don't do a lot of interviews, but I, I made right. my I run. I definitely want to see those two. Yeah. Well. Right when I did my interview with Breakfast Club, the whole Nick Cannon thing happened, you know, with Professor Griff. So this is recent yeah. that you did the interview? Yeah, like, uh, yeah, about a, a couple weeks ago. A week ago or something, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. literally the day after the Nick Cannon thing. Yeah. And they asked me what I thought. And what I said then, which I'm still going to say now, is that me and Nick Cannon actually have a personal relationship off camera. You know, we, we talk, we, we did talk on a regular basis, and the day it happened... I hit him, and he he hit me back. He tried to try to call me, and we kept missing each other. So we haven't spoken yet. Um, Nick Cannon got rid of his cell phone like three months ago, so you can't. Yeah, even he re- did. You can't even really reach him. You gotta go yeah, through call other New means. York and talk to Asia yeah, or something like yeah, that. exactly. Um, <laughs> so I haven't spoken to him. So I don't want to. I don't want to speak personally about what I thought about his words because I feel me and him need to have a conversation first before I mm-hmm. speak about it, just based on our relationship. Mm-hmm. But what do you think about what happened? Well, Nick and I as well have a personal relationship. Okay. And I have spoken to him. S- since this happened? Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Okay. Because the day before this happened, which was a Tuesday, Nick and I did an extensive interview for 
uh, his YouTube show, which he was going to send it. I was going to put it on my YouTube channel. And it was also going to be on the Power 106 app and on the one oh you know, the radio show that he had. It was a long interview, though. They were going to chop part of it for the radio, put part of it for the app, and the rest of it was going to be extensive and on the thing. So that was on Tuesday. It was all going to drop on Thursday. On Wednesday, I get an email from the radio station uh, media people, and they said, we're going to hold these interviews for a while. We're not going to drop them right now. Just going to, like, play music in a slot and stuff like mm -hmm. that. I was like, yeah. oh, man. And so I, too, text him, you know, because we had some other business that we was taking care of, you know, during that time. And he hit me back, and he sounded positive. He said, I'm built for this. It's don't, don't trip, you know, and as long as Nick is good, I'm good. I, uh... I'm not also not going to comment on what he said um, because those were his thoughts. I know he's very passionate. He's studying theology in school right now. He's going to get his master's degree. And I know that, you know, he believes what he said. He may have had a delivery that rubbed people the wrong way. But you can agree to disagree, and people can have their feelings about stuff. And, um, you know, I'm not going to say one way or another how I feel one way or another. But that was Nick, and that's what he said, and he's still my friend. And even if he was the biggest um, asshole and racist out there, all I could do as a friend would be to try to talk to him and, you know, get him to see that maybe that wasn't the right thing to say in a town that is primarily run by the people who you, you know, insulted. And um, and, uh, and 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 pissed off, but um, you know Nick Nick is gonna be fine. Uh, everybody gonna be fine. You know the 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 community, the Jewish community that was up in arms. They got what they needed was which was some. You know they loved the discipline. I so said everybody loves the discipline. Somebody he got disciplined, and then as much as he lost. You know, last couple of jobs, but Nick, if he never worked again from this day on, financially he's, he's still, still rich. fine. He's still rich. He's yeah. been rich before, um, before wilding out or any of that. True. And um, so, you know, as long as he can take care of his kids and stuff like that, I don't think he gives a shit. But he did issue an apology, which was incorrectly stated that he had not apologized, but he did issue an extensive apology for for what he said and how he said it. How he really feels, I don't know. He'll have to tell me when we when we talk. Yeah, I mean he has an interview coming up uh with a rabbi who's the head of the anti defamation league and they're they're having a conversation about it. And I think ultimately, you know, and this is this is some of the things I talked about with Charlemagne. People are People could speak and they could say things that are that are hurtful, but if those people turn around and try to learn the other side of who they're talking about, I think that it's really up to us as a society to accept their apology and accept some of the things they don't know. Like, for example, when Deshaun Jackson put up the the Hitler quote, I went on Twitter, I said, fuck Deshaun Jackson. But, like I explained to Charlemagne, nine of my relatives were killed by Nazis. I actually said uh, nine of my aunts and uncles. It was actually my grand aunts and uncles. It was all my grandfather's brothers and sisters were killed by Nazis in World War II, whether by gunfire or or camps. 50-something relatives that I would have had just got wiped out. You know what I'm saying? All their all Well, their yes, sibling. I know what you're saying because yeah. the, the thing that's wild, though, is that you can count how many relatives were slaughtered. Yeah. We, as black people, have we don't even have a count. Right, it's millions. I, I you know, get we it. Don't know, I don't know 
what family members of mine was slaughtered. I don't know what, you know, n nothing. We can't trace nothing back. I don't trust any of these, um, you know, 21 and me, whatever that is. You know you know what that yeah. is. And yeah, I know what you're talking about. The family tree shit because... After it goes back so far, then you can't tra you can't trace nothing. Right, so but but, but I think I think that it's you have to be careful, right? When you say, "Well, the murders that happen over here aren't as bad as the murders that happened over no, here." No, I never, I you never. You see what I'm saying? That. Yeah, because they're course. like, well, the, the 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 Jewish Holocaust lasted five years; the Black Holocaust is still going. Yeah, that's no. that's one hundred percent true, and it is. But, it but is. I never I, tried to um, uh, under. I never tried to yeah. say anything. You know that Holocaust was so horrible. It like I couldn't even I couldn't even watch like Schindler's List. I yeah. can't even watch the shit. I can't. I could only read I, half. I, I, of, I watched it. I watched it multiple times. I couldn't. I couldn't do it. Right. I couldn't. No, literally couldn't do it. And um. Ellie, uh, what's his name? Ellie Mizell's, uh book, you know, that guy that Oprah was always uh, hanging with and went to Auschwitz with. Anyway, he was a, uh, he was captured and he made it out and mm -hmm. he wrote a book. I wrote, read half of that and I just couldn't do it. That's how bad that it is. So I would never, I don't want to compare them. They were both horrible. Yeah. You know, I don't think that we should compare. No, no, it was, was. Was slavery worse than the gas chambers? They're both equally horrible. Yeah, and but, they're, but they're, then, they're but all they're all horrific. It's all horrific. It's all horrific. Yet somehow, you know, the Jewish community has been able to restructure, rebuild, re you know, vamp and and come up. And we haven't found the I had the opportunities to be able to do that. We're still, you know. I, I understand. We're still, I, I, I but, understand. But that ain't got nothing to do with, 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 with what we said about Nick. Right. Nick, Nick um, you know, he did what he did, and he stood by what he said, but he apologized for saying it in such a way as to come off cross or hurtful or insensitive. And he's trying to learn a better way to communicate how he feels about yeah. that and talk to the rabbi and stuff like that. So right. and what, what more Nick, do you want from fucking Nick? Right. What and what and what Nick said was that now he basically has both communities mad at him because the Jewish community was mad at him. You know, white white people as well. But then the black, black people, people mad got mad at him for apologizing. So so it, it's it's one of those things. Um like I said, I, I just need to get Nick on the phone. We need to have a conversation because some of the things that he said identify you know affects things that I identify with myself, you know, as, as a Jewish person, as a white person, you know, and so forth. So, you know, me and him just have to have a conversation. Hopefully that that'll happen at some point. I'm sure it will. Yeah. And I'm sure when you do everything is going to be, you know, he'll be like, Hey man, you know, you know how Nick is. He's not, yeah. he don't have a vicious bone in his body. But then again, he is a brother from San Diego. <laughs> yeah. You know, he's not Mr. America's got talent. He's a brother from San Diego. Well, this comes to our next topic. Jada Pinkett and August Alsina. And then there's Will Smith. Throw it in there. Number one, do you consider August Alsina a snitch? No. Because he didn't sign no, no non-disclosure agreement, apparently. <laughs> you know? No. I mean... There's a big thing about men kissing and telling. They think that make you bitch made. But this is a guy who was hurt. You know, you you men like Jamie Foxx once told me when a when a when a man hurts or leaves a woman, it's devastating. You know, but when a woman hurts or leaves a man, it's catastrophic. That's what Jamie said. And this relate. boy was in love with this married woman. Mm -hmm. And the married woman was acting like she loved him and probably did at a time when her and her husband were not getting along. Well, then it all had to end. All good things come to an end. And 
Jada and Will decided it was going to work it out. So, hey, Og, it's been real fun for these last couple of years. I'm going back over here to the homie, you know, the the millionaire <laughs> movie star that I'm married to. Who I have kids to. with. Yeah, and I'm going back home now, but it's been real, so take care of yourself. Uh, he was already mental when she got him. Fragile, to say the least. He'd been through, you know, he had a terrible relationship with his mama. He health, start health right problems. There. Health problems, lost his sister, lost his brother, had his kids, got day kids. You know, he was fragile when she got him. Jaden brought, brought him brought him to, to her. Jada. Jaden. Oh, Jaden? Brought him to the home. Oh, really? That's how he even got in the mix? Oh, man. This gets more That's interesting word on by the, the street. Day. That's word on the street. Word on the, word street. On the street. Right. And, uh, you know, in whatever Will's dalliances, agreed upon dalliances may have been, you don't hear none of his chicks talking. And 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 Willow didn't bring home one of her little girlfriends, and Will started smashing her. Allegedly. Uh, uh, I ain't heard none, no R. Kelly stuff about Will Smith. I, I'm, well, I'm not saying underage, but you know, I'm sure Willow got friends over 18. I'm sure that Will gets his own motherfucking side bitches. <laughs> so he don't need his daughter to wrangle no bitches for him. But when you take upon a role of uh, mentoring somebody, which I don't know when Jada become the, became the earth mother of, of the world, but you know, <laughs> Okay, last I checked, you know, that was the chick that set it off. And, you know, uh, <laughs> fucking Cosby show and stuff like that. And doing some great acting. And we love Jay, the little action hero. And she's like a little action hero. But um, I don't know when she turned into, you know, this guru. But if that's the role you're going to play, then it's not fair to take a boy who's dealing with all that even though, he, you know, listen, listen, Let, let's get real nitty gritty. If August Alcina wanted to fuck me, I'd probably let him hit it. But I wouldn't be trying to mentor the motherfucker. I'd be like, hey, Aug, that was fun. You want something to eat? Stay in touch now, okay? But I can't, I don't have the kind of time to be mentoring a young boy in the, professional capacity which he needs like that you know he needed prof he need professional physical physical doctor help and mental doctor help and you know hell jada was like you know well hell well when jada and will did that red table talk which i have no idea why why will agree to do it Will he, was sitting there looking at Jada like, tell him what you did, bitch. Go on and tell uh, him. That's the look he had on his face. Not that he called her bitch. But he was yeah. like, yeah. Go on and tell him. Tell well, him what you did. Well, remember, that's where the whole entanglements thing. It was an entanglement. <laughs> that was a hurtful word to August. I'm sure he didn't appreciate it because he was in love. And I, he probably thought she was too. Yeah, but when, when he heard that word, you know what he said? I'm gonna write a song about it. Like the here, here go. There you go. He <laughs> took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> he made a song okay, called Entanglement. Okay. Where gonna... he's basically mocking Will, talking about, yeah, you know, I'm doing things that you can't do and this, that, and the third. No doubt. And then and then he said that Will gave him permission. Well, just like Jada said, can't nobody give you permission to do anything but you. If she would have done it with or without his permission, yeah. probably, you know? I mean, Will crying, though, on that table, like that Will. I had already cut it off by then. The Will, the will you know, which is replacing the Jordan crying meme. I, the I, Will I, crying I, I, meme. I never, I never saw, I, I couldn't take you it. You couldn't see it? No. You've I, never seen the Will crying no, meme? No, I didn't stay that long. I but did like, you actually see the picture that I'm talking about? No. But Why, you got it? Of course I got it. Oh, my God. This is going to replace the Jordan crying meme? Of course. Oh, man. Sorry. I ain't seen it. Oh, man. Will. You've never seen this? I did see that. You did see that. I'm going to say, you can't be on the internet and not see that. I didn't want to see it. <laughs> You're trying to unsee it. Yeah, some things I want, don't, I want to unsee. Yeah. Uh, 
I mean, Will is just looking bad. I'll well, be honest. He's kind of looked like a, like a cuckold a little bit. Oh my God! Don't say that word. Oh my God! <laughs> it's kind of looking like. Don't that. do that. Oh. And, and let, let me tell you something. I'm I'm just gonna keep this going. Oh. oh I, I, I mentioned this when I interviewed Boosie. Oh. I, I have heard stories from years ago, from a reliable source, about how Will and Jada get down. And this right here ain't nothing compared to what I heard. What I heard from a reliable source was some was some things that'll make your jaw drop. Let me tell you, and I'm not gonna say it. Cause, cause yes, you are. They're, they're as soon gonna, as we turn this camera, gonna, as soon as we turn oh, the camera, yes, I will tell you off camera. Okay. Because if I say it on camera, I'll get sued, and no I, I can't afford a Will Smith lawsuit. No. I just can't afford it. Who can? I'm sorry. Right. I don't have Will Smith money. Right. Sorry. I don't have a big corporation behind me. But what I heard, oh my God. Uh, I told I told Boosie off camera too. If he wants to blurt it out, he could do it. But what what I heard, oh my God, this ain't nothing. This is this is G rated compared to what I heard. Okay, and so then this brings me to this subject. Okay. The kids. Okay? Because I've heard things as well, but that's all we did was hear them. They ain't had me up there for no circle jerk or no gang bang or nothing like that. So I don't know nothing. <laughs> I've been invited to that cookout. But, um, you know, either the kids knew. All, but see, they got all kind of pictures of they all vacationing together like one big happy family. Now, either they knew that mom and dad is not getting along right now. Maybe they're staying in two separate wings of the house right now. But, but. Cousin Og always seems to be coming from mom's end of the wing. Yeah. Right? So they either knew or they found out earlier before we did or they found out when we did, which if they did, that's a whole nother pot of shit. But I, I believe that they're honest enough with those crazy kids that they got, that they've all talked this out before it ever dropped on the red table. I'm sure it did. But, you know, I mean... Shit, Jaden wears a dress and says that Tyler, the creator, is his boyfriend. So, I mean, that that whole family is, is really just wild, honestly. Like, you don't hear a peep out of that little Willow, though. What's she? Yeah, Willow, Willow just wants to live her life, yo. Like, y'all got me. <laughs> <laughs> Willow I, might be the sanest one up there. I know, right? Willow, yeah. Willow is like the... <laughs> G- Gammy was on a needle for two years. She's the Kendall Jenner of that family. Like, she's, yeah. the, she's the normal one. Not, uh, yeah, yeah, Willow. <laughs> Well, it might be the smartest one up there. I can tell you that the whole Smith family, August Alcina thing does not hold a candle to Tory Lanez and Megan Thee Stallion. Now that right there, and let me just say this, let me just say this. I don't know whether this is true or not, but I just cannot picture... Tory Lanes at 5'2 having sex with Megan the Stallion at 5'10 and probably 100 pounds heavier. He than probably her. didn't. That's probably why he <laughs> shot us. <Shit. laughs> yeah, like I don't know what led up to it. Were they were they fucking around and then he just was like I don't know. You know You ain't gonna leave me, bitch. I don't <laughs> like, know. Well, how you get shot time two two times in the foot. Two times and in the foot. And if you can if you can injure somebody by shooting them two times in the foot, maybe Toy Lanes need to teach that tactic to the LAPD. Mm. And maybe they could start shooting people in the foot instead of shooting them in the back and shooting to kill. Right. I mean, I'll be honest. When I first heard that Megan the Stallion got shot and Tory Lanes was somehow involved, I'll be totally honest. The last thing in the world I thought was that Tori shot Megan. Yeah, but she was already shot when she got out the car, see? He didn't shoot her. I, I don't think he shot her outside the car. No, I, I get that. I, but what I'm saying is Tori shooting Megan. Right, so did you was think a maybe total a gun sh- accident? Maybe a gun accident? I mean, Megan said Pretty that someone. Accurate accident. Megan said in in her public statement that she was shot and the person was trying to hurt her. Hurt yeah. her. This yeah. was not like, oh man, oh sorry. Maybe she was wrestling that fool, and he shot her. In the Megan foot. looked like she could beat Tori's ass. Exactly. She looked like she could beat the shit out of Tori. Yeah, she's a big. She's and, and, a stallion. 
And you know and who's savage. Do you know who's happier than anyone that this happened? Who? Chris Brown. Because now people can say, well, at least he didn't shoot her. Because <laughs> let me tell you, have you ever met Rihanna? Uh, sort of. I interviewed her very early in her career. It was, uh, I couldn't even turn the, I had to put a cap on my camera. I had to just do an audio interview because she wasn't wearing her makeup or whatever else. I ran into her at, at Def Jam. And Rihanna is like my size. Rihanna's not a little girl. She's like 5'10", 5'11", really? and, and relatively stocky. Okay. Rihanna could probably beat the shit out of Chris Brown. Well, she certainly gave him, you know, his money's worth. Yeah. And they got in that little squab. Yeah. So I'm just wondering, was was Megan beating the shit out of Tori before I don't this happened? Know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I do not know nothing. I don't know nothing about that. But I hope that she gets better. I I thank the Lord that she didn't get injured worse than it was, or didn't do anything to the beautiful body of hers or her beautiful face. Mm. You know, thank God that it was just her foot, and I pray that she has a speedy recovery. I don't know. Did Tory Lane get charged with any kind of? Uh, I, I believe so. He bonded out. He's charged with something. He bonded out, but I, I don't know if people are cooperating or not. But there was a driver in the car. I'm sure he's cooperating. I thought one of Megan's friends was in the car. One of Megan's friends was in the car as well. Remember, Drea made the comment like, "Oh, I, I'm, you know, oh, I want that type of love. I'm here for it." <laughs> wrong, wrong, wrong comment. Well, <laughs> I don't, I don't want anyone so in love with me they're gonna shoot me. Like, I'm good. I have been in love with somebody I wanted to shoot before, though. You pulled out a gun. Me? Did I pull it out? Yeah. No. Did I have one? <laughs> I refuse to answer the question on the basis of my criminate me. <laughs> I'll reclaim my time. Well, speaking of shooting, 15 people were shot outside of a funeral home in Chicago. Oh. What type of ignorant ass shit is this? 15 people at a funeral home. Someone pulled up to a damn wake and just open fire into the crowd. I've never heard of this. I'll, I'll, I mean, I've heard of people getting shot at a funeral. You know, a fight breaks out. I mean, funerals, funerals are tense. I mean, yeah. you know, when my father died, you know, last November, this was not a pleasant funeral. Like people, you know, that there, there was bad feelings. There was anger. There was hurt. There was crying. There was... I could understand how at a funeral you run into the wrong person and things yeah. escalate and someone someone gets shot. I I I kind of get that, but but to to do a damn drive by and and kill well, I don't know if anyone got killed, but women and children got shot and, and so forth is just yo like you you gotta you gotta look at someone like this like like a Dylan Roof, you know what I'm saying? You gotta look at this person as a terrorist, quite honestly. I don't know, Vlad. You need to do some stories about tree planting in Central Park or some shit like this. Because this shit right here, I can't even relate. I can't even relate to that. Chicago's got a whole mess of problems as, as far as gun violence goes. And I have been to some gangster funerals before. But I, I don't even see the point in anybody bringing a pistol to a funeral. But I've been to some thuggish funerals before where some... Uh, shit was about to break out, but I can't see anybody doing that. And drive-bys are just so chicken shit in the first place, because innocent people get hurt. So I don't know. I don't have no. I I can't comment on that shit. In Chicago again, a man was sentenced for 15 years for shooting someone in their grave. Oh yeah, he got 15 years for that. Yeah. They sentenced him that quick? Because I just heard about that story about a week ago. Well, the it happened in 2017. Oh. I think it just now got... You know how these, these trials, uh, how they, they get pushed back for years. Yeah. Um, 15 years for shooting into someone who's already dead. Well, had him and I guess, I guess he's you know, got a lot of money. You know, he said, you, got, you, know, you know, you ain't shit. You got what you deserved. And he mm -hmm. fired a single shot into the grave of a deceased man. 
uh, who had been murdered two days earlier. Yeah, well, I mean, there's mental distress. You know, what if his mama was there and shit like that, kids and stuff like that? I mean, come on, 15 years for shooting a dead person? Come on now. He, he should, he should 25 be 25 to life for selling dime bag of weed? Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. This man should be in a mental institution. That's where he should be. He shouldn't be in prison. Well, I mean, yeah. we don't know the circumstances, you know? Well, I mean, the, I don't know. It's kind of laid out. The dude might have, might have raped his daughter. How do we know? We don't know. Well, here we go. This is what's said in the by the U.S. attorney. Okay. Uh, when a felon brings a loaded gun to a populated area and uses the gun to threaten and endanger strangers, this conduct will not be tolerated. The mourners were all in the immediate vicinity of the defendant when he produced a loaded weapon and were placed in danger by the defendant's reckless firing of the weapon into yeah. the gravesite. So there were other people around. I get it. But he shot a dead person. Them caskets cost a lot of money, Vlad. <laughs> fucking up my $6,500 for a fucking... Cask and you go to shoot a fucking hole in the shit. <laughs> I don't know, goddamn. Um, well, since last time, five people have been arrested for Pop Smoke's murder. A bunch of bummy looking LA kids, basically, teenagers. Two of them were underage. So I'm assuming they're 17 or 16. The other three look like they're barely 18. Damn. We're lost. You know, uh, I guess th they were under investigation for this other murder that happened in L.A. as well. Because remember, when it first happened, everyone was like, oh, it's because that Rolls Royce that he, that he stole. Or, oh, it was some gang shit in New York. It was some Crip blood shit, something, something. And you come to find out it's because he flashed his address on social media. That's what the police are saying. Not to say the police get it right all the time, but it kind of makes sense. Considering who got arrested. These aren't a bunch of Brooklyn guys that got arrested. A bunch yeah. of local L.A. guys. And Pop Smoke was 20. He wasn't even old enough to drink. I spoke to him two days before he got killed. Yeah, you told me. He was on top of the world. He was so happy. Sad, yo. Fuck all five of those guys. Mm. Hope they get raped by male porn stars in prison. Well, that wish will probably come true. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's it's sad. It's sad. And his album comes out number one. And then Juice World, like a week later, he comes out number one. He dies at like 22. We're, we're losing our kids. Look at poor Naya. Yeah, Naya drowns. And th that story just seems kind of weird. Because she said that, I mean, the story is that like she got her son uh, back, back in the, the boat. boat. Which she went under. But there's a lot of shrubbery around there. They, you know, maybe her foot got caught in some seaweed. But why are you in the water out there without your life without jacket a life on vest, yeah. in the first place? Why did you get out there? That's not the, the the pool where you can swim to the edge. Why would you go out there and swim without your life jacket on? Yeah, because they found the life jacket in the boat. Right, in the boat. Yeah, why why take that off? Why, if you ever had it on? Yeah. If you ever even had it on? Well, I, I believe that when you rent the boat, they make you put it on. Like, usually there, there's someone there that checks you out. You got the life, go, okay. Boom. Well, I don't know. Did you see the footage of her walking and getting on the boat? Mm-mm. No. Oh, I did. And she wasn't wearing a life vest? I didn't. You couldn't see it clearly, but I didn't see them putting them on. Now, she might have put it on the kid and then put it on herself and then took it out. Girl, girls ain't got no business out in no boat with a baby by themselves anyway. Right, it's a four-year-old, right? Yeah. Ah, oh, man. Then even if you were going to commit suicide, how do you know the baby's not going to stand up and fall over in the boat and die as well? It doesn't so, seem like suicide. It no, but I'm just saying. It doesn't seem like suicide. I'm just, just saying. Like, just like those black men hanging from trees is not suicide. You mean the black men that they're not giving any coverage to? Exactly. The ones whose stories has died already? Let me, let me tell you something. 
I, I've known people that commit suicide, that have committed suicide. You know, my friend Disco D, uh, he committed suicide actually by hanging. He was bipolar, like Kanye. He hung himself uh, in his mother's house. I have never heard... Let me just say this. I think in the history of America, there's never been a black man that, that hanged himself from a tree. Let me just say that. I'm just going to put that out there and, and let it marinate for a second. There's lots of black people that have committed suicide, but I don't think that... Not like that. I don't think that they say, you know something? I'm going to go to a tree, a public tree, and hang myself out there. Across from City Hall. Across from City Hall. Where there's got to be cameras outside. I, 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 don't, I don't think there's been a, a single black person with a history of, of lynching in America that that's the way they want to be remembered at the end of the day. I'm sure lots of black people have shot themselves in the head. You know, black people have taken too many pills. Or, Isn't that or, what they said about Sandra Bland as well? How was she found in herself? Was yeah. she found hanging? Yeah. Yeah. But a tree, though? Yeah. I, 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 there, there's been a lot of prisoners that, that hanged themselves in cells. She didn't. Yeah, I'm not saying she did. I know. But, but, but that has happened. But from a tree... Yeah. yeah, specifically. From a tree in public? No. No, did not happen, and both of those murders were deemed suicides. Yeah, but we knew we knew when it happened. We meaning black folk knew when it happened that it didn't happen like that. Even if you wanted to, even if you were in some kind of psychosis and you wanted to uh, perpetuate the race war after you, you know, who's that thought out if you're in the psychosis to wait? No, uh, no. No, no, no. But, but 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 isn't it odd that those stories aren't getting the coverage that they should be? I mean, we covered and there's it. multiple. Well, yeah, but yeah. I'm talking about no, I feel you. the you know no, I, national I, I day every day until we find out what the fuck happened. Coverage. Yeah, I mean, Breonna Taylor. There's still protests over that. Well, here's something that somebody was talking to me about too. They said, okay, so. Somebody gave the order for those cops to go to that address mm -hmm. and do what they did. No, so where do we stop? We're going to get the guys that barged in there and shot and killed her. We're going to get the person who gave the order for them to go over there that was wrong. The person who wrote up the paperwork on an inmate who was already incarcerated for them to go get. They got They got to go too. Yeah. You know, and then who told them? So it's got to go deep. You know, I'm, I'm hoping that it's not swept under the rug. I'm hoping that they're doing a thorough investigation as to all people concerned that well, need to go down for that. Well, I interviewed Turk from the Hot Boys, mm -hmm. and he had the exact same thing happen to him, you know, without the murder. He had a no-knock, you know, a no-knock warrant, you know, police home invasion happened with him, and he ended up shooting one of the cops. Not not killing, but but shooting one of the cops because he thought that it was a robbery. So he grabbed Just his gun. Just like Brianna's man did. Right, right. And he actually shot one of the cops. That's when the SWAT team kicked in the dope. You know, two police officers got shot. They shot literally 52 times, man. And I didn't get hit or grazed. My wife ain't get hit, you know, man. And the police, man, I found out they were the police. I never intended to shoot no police. You feel me? I thought we was being robbed. Just like Rihanna's man did. Oh, one of the cops got shot? Yes. Oh, I didn't know that part. Yeah, okay. but they took him to jail, and he had a legal registered firearm yeah. in his home. Yeah, I mean, they're saying they're trying to get rid of no-knock warrants altogether. Right. I mean, at the end of the day, I, I just like, okay, look, the police have to be held to a higher standard here. Like, like... You know, a little girl got killed, I believe, in a no-knock warrant, uh, you know, some time back. I think, like, maybe about 15 years ago. I think it was in Chicago. Uh, yeah, like... I mean, but do you remember the batter rams that used to be here in, in L.A.? In L.A., yeah. Those weren't... They didn't knock before they knocked Granny's door in either. And I don't even know what some of the stories of that... Uh, how that ended up, what did they do when they knock on the wrong door and bash, bash the wrong door down? Do
do the people ever get any money? Did they get those places mm -hmm. replaced? We don't know what happened. Somebody had to do a story on that. The after effects of the damn battery ram, because they came in on your ass too and knocked your whole wall down your whole door. Then if they take you to jail, now your doors, your place is open game for anybody who wants to walk <laughs> up there and get any right. damn thing. Right. Yeah. Well, uh, since our last interview, I interviewed uh, Daniel Green who was one of the two men convicted of killing Michael Jordan's father. Mm. Stupidest story I've ever heard. Stupidest, most tragic, unnecessary. How did you interview him? He's doing life in prison. Someone connected me to a sister who then connected me to him. And, uh, we conducted the interview because this is coming off. I'd actually been holding off, holding on to this interview since the last dance actually ended. But because of, you know, George Floyd, I said, okay, this is not the right time to put out a story about a black man killing another black man. Let me, let me just hold on to this for a while. And then, you know, we released it a, a few weeks ago. So one of the guys that killed Michael Jordan's father was black? Yes. I thought they were, oh, oh. No, I'm thinking of Cosby's son. Yeah. Oh, okay. One of them was black, one of them was white. Uh, Never knew about the black one. Yeah, Daniel Green. The story he told was that the you know the white guy killed Jordan's father, but he helped get rid of the body. He helped hide the body. The other guy, Larry, said we were together and... Daniel was the trigger man. Were they just trying to rob him and they did because he was sleeping in the car or something, right? That's the story. That that Jordan's father pulled over in North Carolina, felt, you know, to take a nap in the car, but where he was taking a nap was down the street from one of those, you know, kind of like CD motels where, you know, the prostitutes hang out and the drug deals get done and everything else. Yeah, like I know that. about those hotels. <laughs> you go to those? I know about that. Every so often. Uh and we're not going to know what happened because there's only two witnesses. Uh, but it sounded like a robbery. So they didn't know who he was. They didn't know who he was. Right. But let me tell you what happened. They fucked up, boy. And, and you could you could watch this on, on the Vlad TV podcast, you know, listen to it on the podcast or watch it on the YouTube channel. You know, the whole interview is up now. They go and they take his red Lexus and they go and dump the body in a swamp somewhere. And then for the next week, these two kids who are 18 years old who live in trailer homes drive around in his car, make 40 phone calls from the car phone to their friends and family, and then to really put the, the stupid cherry on top, Daniel Green makes a music video in his house wearing Jordan's championship ring and watch and raps about, you know, you'll get two in the head. life in prison for both of them. And after the last dance started, they put him in cell 23. Mm. Jordan's number. Mm -mm. And I really put this out there because there was always the, even in the last dance, they were talking about, oh, it was because of Jordan's gambling. It was retaliation for Jordan's gambling. It was, the mafia did it, you know, and so forth. Mafia had nothing to do with this. It was two stupid teenagers who are broke, who I think try to do a robbery that, that turned into a murder. And it just destroyed Terrible way lives. to lose a parent. A horrible way to lose a parent. And, and Jordan and his dad were super close. Oh, I know. And I saw the last dance too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Jordan stopped playing, right, after that. He, he retired. He started playing baseball. His father had been at every game. Yeah. And for every championship and was there. Yeah. And then they showed the first game he played when he came back. The first game he played since his father's. Yeah. It was sad. Yeah. You know, also, rest in peace, John Lewis. He died recently. Yes. A giant in civil, civil rights. Civil rights, yeah. Yeah. March with uh, Martin Luther Ever King. Ever since I've been young, I knew about him. Yeah. They just did a movie on him, too. The Washington Redskins are changing their name 
And the current working name is Washington Football Team. I, I swear on this. That sounds like some Trump shit. <laughs> like, oh, we can't we can't use that racist name anymore. Right, we can't say nothing no more. Just call them the damn football team. Watch your football team. I thought there was supposed to be some kind of generals or the Washington generals or Washington some shit. Who knows? Yeah. I mean, I always thought the Redskins was a racist title. Well, I didn't, name. but I wasn't thinking in those terms at that time. Um, well, they're certainly they they're certainly moving quick on that. Well, then what are they gonna do about our shit? Yeah, they changed the name of the football team. They want to keep everybody happy. In the meantime. We're still getting killed like flies. Choked out still. They haven't even stopped with the choco. Yep. Still throwing people to the ground. Still cracking people's heads open. Still beating, shooting women and men. White and black. Old and young. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a power trip, and a, I just can't see not having compassion like that or insensitivity. That's why Nick said some of what he said. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of frustration. I get it. And uh, the police have been really abusing their power from the very beginning. Like, I actually looked it up. New York passed a law which allowed you to actually see the pensions of certain of, of police officers who retire. Mm-hmm. There's this one cop who's getting five hundred thousand a year. These cops will have hundred thousand dollar salaries and do overtime, quote unquote, which probably just means they're on call, right? Probably means they're just sleeping at home, and you know if they get a call, they'll get it, but they'll count it as overtime. They'll walk away with quarter million dollar a year salaries. Uh, and when you say defund the police, like that's what I think people are talking about. Of like the the amount of money these people get for six months of training, and the ability to to kill people and destroy people's lives and on top walk of away. it. You have to train. Longer than that to be a hairstylist. Exactly. You can't just do hair after six months. You got to spend about a year. Hours and hours and hours. Yeah. Well, before our interview, you told me that you actually take uh, Dr. Sabi's products. Uh, some. Some. I'm not a big fan of Dr. Sabi. I was I was saying that. Well, for a he's while. dead, so they're really not his products. This is his son. Right. Nick Nick is working on the Dr. Savy documentary. I know. Uh, as was Nipsey. I know that too. And I actually talk, uh, my man Carl Jones, who was the, uh, you know, was partnered uh, on, you know, did a lot of the animation and voices on the boondocks. Him and Dr. Savy were actually really close. And, and he kind of like, me and him had a long conversation about it. He kind of just broke down like, look, the, the thing about Dr. Sebi is a lot of his products are just food, essentially. They're not drugs. They're not like miracle ointments or whatever else. You know, I think that a lot of times he had a bad name because he, you know, claimed he can cure cancer and AIDS and, and that type of thing. Well, I think that his son, Abdul, has documentation on that, that he has indeed done that. And I think that Sebi went to court behind some of that and was it was proven that he did do that. No, not exactly. I, I, I actually looked all that up. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The whole thing of he brought all these people, you know, to testify, like that, that's just not true. We actually looked at the court transcripts. Um, he was sued for essentially claiming to be a doctor when he wasn't a medical doctor. He didn't have a degree. And ultimately, I think he just proved that what he was prescribing was just food and it wasn't actually medicine, and they and the, the case was dismissed. Um, 
you know, if people believe, I understand the power of your mind healing your body. Yeah. I get it. I went through really bad um, stomach issues, you know, in my, my mid-20s. I lost a ton of weight. And at the end of all that, I realized it was all in my head. And I gained all my weight back and I became healthy again. So, so I get it. I get it. I guess just the whole curing of, of AIDS and stuff like that. If they really, if this guy really could cure, could have cured AIDS, it would, it would revolutionize everything. Well, they would have killed him and took his recipe. But they still would have used the recipe afterwards. Maybe, unless ha- having AIDS and having cancer is more profitable than curing it, because all they do now is treat it. This is true. I don't but, think they're really trying to cure it. But but you mean to tell me that with all the scientists around the world who would love to be known as the scientists who cured AIDS? Well, I think maybe a couple of people probably have said it, and I think they might have got shut down. Because like you said, out of all the people that's out there and all the donations for cancer research and all the donations to the Cancer Center and and Cedar Sinai and this that. Do you think that they, by now they wouldn't? I've I've been alive for you know thirty something years now, and 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 you mean to tell me they they haven't found one? That's so mysterious. Well, I think cancer is a a tough thing to actually cure. Yeah, well, you know, but it's not so tough to perpetuate the medicine and the treatments yeah. that go along with that that make everybody so much money. I understand that, but but there's so many competing companies and so forth. You don't think that one company that creates a cure would gladly release that so their competitor can no longer sell the treatment? I don't know because I don't know what to believe you know, anymore. There's not one monolithic company. If there was just one drug company, period, in the world, I would agree with you. Yes, this one drug company does not want a cure because they're the only drug company and they're making all the money. But there's literally thousands and thousands of drug companies right. all trying to compete with each other. Sure. Who would love to have say, hey, listen, you don't need to take this Pfizer pill anymore. Just go go take with our, our pill. pill. Mm-hmm. And, you know. But I don't know what to believe anymore about anything. Yeah, I know. It's tough. You know it, it's, I mean? it's one of those things. And, and, of course, you complicate it with things like the just the Tuskegee experiments. Yes. You know? And so so black people feel like, well, they've already experimented on us and they've already done a bunch of fuck shit. So we yeah. don't we don't really trust anything. We don't trust the vaccine. We don't trust the 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 um corona test itself. People feel like if you ain't got it, they're gonna put they, it up in you. Give you it know? to you, yeah. 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 I mean I, I took the the corona antibody test and, and it ended up being negative. Um Meaning that I don't have, I've never had it. Yes, I wouldn't be in here if you had. <laughs> right. Although I'm doing a Deal Hughley interview next week, and he's had it. I was with him the yeah, last week too. Yeah. 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 He was masked the fuck up though. <laughs> I bet. Yeah. I bet that that was a scary video when I saw him passing out. That that was that was uh that was frightening. I, I called him right away. Yeah, I mean I did too. Of course I I just got in his ass about hey we calling you out of concern. You can't send back an emoji or something to say, hey, thank you. But um, not only did he have it and was asymptomatic, but then he infected everybody at his radio station as well, except for his daughter who had on a mask. But his son got it and his co-host got it and technician got it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Listen, I I knew Fred the Godson who died from it. Yeah. He died. Uh, I have pictures with him. I've I've interviews with him. Uh, we we knew you know if we if we would run into each other we would we would catch up for a minute. Like I know one person who died. I know a lot of people have had it now, but I know one person who's actually died. Um, you know th- this stuff is not a joke. I I've been I have been perfect, but I think I've been better than most people. I've been masked up. I've not been going out. I thought you were gonna say masturbating. <laughs> like, does that work? Cause yeah, I ought to be good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's still out here. Here we are. California has surpassed New York in the number of cases. The U.S. is doing an absolute horrible job compared to most other countries. Uh, Trump has been leading, you know, this whole crusade against it. 
He just recently said the masks are okay. He just recently put one on his damn self. I know, right? It, it, it's just it, it's just a mess. And but personally, I, just I feel wish like, he would leave his off. Yeah. Yeah. I feel you. Go back to now. I land. feel you. Hopefully, you know, in our next interview, there's either been a, a cure new, new or a, a treatment or, or it's all gone because, you know, 2020 has been rough. This this year is literally over. Yeah. And, you know, it has shut down the athletics. It's shut down the entertainment industry. It's yeah. shut down. I feel terrible for the small businesses and little delis and things. What about people who opened their business in March and had to shut it down in March? Yeah, there was actually a suicide. There's this, this this kind of somewhat famous restaurateur who just opened her restaurant like right before COVID ended up killing her husband and then killing herself. God damn. Which is probably due to this restaurant opening. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Murder, it's, suicide? Murder, suicide. Murder, suicide. Well, why folks do not handle being broke? Well, I, I think she was Indian. Oh, they definitely can't handle being broke. <laughs> And if you're not going to be broke, I will kill myself first. <laughs> and you're going to. <laughs> we'll be rich in heaven. <laughs> Lunell, always a pleasure and an honor. We got more interviews that you'll be doing for Vlad TV in the future. We're not going to announce them yet because right. they're still in the works. That's right. But, uh, you know, always a pleasure to have you here. And, and thank you for the for the great interviews that you've been bringing to the platform as well. Listen, I thank you, too. People are like, why you fuck with that Vlad? Why you <laughs> fuck with Vlad? Like, Vlad fucks with me. Shit, I'm interested in anybody that's interested in what I got to say. There you go. You know. Until next time. Until next time, bro. Peace.